Okay, this interview tonight is with these two guys, very special musicians, two guitarists, two genres of music, two different ways of working as musicians, both Christians, both doing their own thing, and the way that they need to do it to survive as musicians. And this is Mr. Troy Gray from Tucson, Arizona. This is Mr. Bill Bencham from Las Vegas, Nevada. At the end of it, a surprise guest artist. So be sure and watch the whole thing. And I'm going to ask both of these guys the same questions and let them have their own individual responses. Was this desire to pursue music something that you grew up with or did it develop later? And I'm going to ask you to answer first, Troy. It eventually developed later, even, even though it was around me growing up with my mother playing the piano. And she also played a lot of music on the record player, you know, those things with a disc that goes on top and goes around. And, um, and I've, I've, I've always thought about being a musician, but it was a dream, but it really never developed until I was in my teens. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Okay, Bill, you what? can answer that question if you will. What, when Troy started to play music? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, I guess I was always interested in music when I was a little kid. Obviously, when I was real young, single-digit age, you know, I didn't uh, play any music, just listen to whatever my parents had around, but I was always really interested in music a lot. And I uh, started out in sixth grade playing the trombone and played that all the way through high school. And of course, my dream was to learn how to play rock guitar, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I pursued that afterwards, but yeah, pretty much most of my life I've been in. Okay. Okay. Now, um, do you feel that this desire happened quickly or did it happen over a period of time, Troy? Uh, again, it was over a period of time. First, it was something I listened to with my, with my mother playing and, and, and uh, her music. And, and I wanted to be a drummer at first. Did you? Yes, I did. And, and mom and dad um, got a drum set for me on layaway at the store. Uh -huh. But then for Christmas, and, and, and the store sold it before they could get it out. Oh my goodness. So they got me a little guitar that I put on my lap and I play drums on. Uh -huh. <laughs> but eventually they did give me a snare drum, and that's, that's what I played for a while with snare in elementary school. <laughs> and you started out playing uh, metal, rock? Yes, didn't rock, you? blues, heavy metal. And you did that for what, 15 years? About 15 years. Yeah. And then you switched your genre and went to. I went to a, a genre called Mavo Flamenco. Yes. And that was because metal died there for a while. Yes. In the 90s. Where you lived, and right? Where I lived up in Vail, Colorado. And so I picked up the classical guitar, and I had no clue what to do with it. I can't read music. Yeah. Never had a lesson. And so I would sit there and listen to CDs, learn the bass notes first, learn the melody line second, and put them together. Uh -huh. and that's wow. how I started. Wow. Same question to you, Bill. Did it happen quickly or did it develop over a period of time? Did it come about over it, a period of time? It, it developed quickly over a period of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. I mean, it developed several times. Um, you know, I. I really wanted to be a rock guitar player but in high school you know my parents didn't take it seriously they just thought well this is a phase yeah. that's going to go yeah, out of it. a passing fancy. And a, and a friend of mine was a really good drummer he was a drummer that I knew in high school and he had a drum set and his parents had a uh, unexpectedly had another child when when he was in high school oh. so he couldn't play his drums at home and he said hey can I keep him over at your house and come over and jam every once in a while and I said you know I talked it over to my parents and said yeah you know so he probably played this drum set once or twice, but I had it there for probably a whole semester at my house, and I came home every day, put on side one of Led Zeppelin Physical Graffiti, and played the drums through with that wow. every day. And I actually became fairly well accomplished on drums before I was ever any good at guitar at all. Wow, drums, drums. Drums, drums. <laughs> wow, this is strange. Uh, now you're both songwriters with opposite styles. Did it come natural to you, or did you have to work at it to um, improve? A lot of work. I used to play the three chord songs, write three chord songs. I right. couldn't play any solos, so it was just, ah, 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 and that 
was it. Uh -huh. And and eventually down the road, I, I would learn to um, to solo off of the pentatonic scale, the blue uh -huh. scale, uh -huh. and uh, and that's when I would learn to be able to develop melodies. Yes, and, and I would expand. On In other that. words, it's not something it just comes about overnight. It has oh, no. to be worked at. And this is something that will be very helpful to people out there that are musicians that want to learn how to write songs. It's not something that you learn, it's something that you develop and improve. And when, and when, I, when I listen to old recordings of myself, even 10 years ago, uh -huh. it's like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. And then, and then I compare myself now to then and I've improved a lot right. through the years. Well, that's, that's how it should be. Absolutely. Because as you record and you listen back, you learn little tricks. Mm -hmm. You learn what sounds good. Singers do the same thing. They learn what sounds good. They, they learn what sounds bad. They try to eliminate that. Mm -hmm. Bring in more of the good, eliminate the bad. How about you, Bill? Uh, it came naturally and I had to work at it. There was a certain amount that I had right up front. You know, everybody has their style or their, their talent, something that they're good at. Mm -hmm. and. And some of a certain amount of it comes naturally, but then, you know, I've, I've even developed part of my skills this week, writing songs. Of course. You know. Of course, because you've been working a lot in the studio this week. Yeah, this week, yeah. A lot. Yeah, yeah, I've been kind of doing, a, another thing out of style for me, been playing kind of bluesy country rock. Yeah. Helping the uh, Sweet family uh, put together some wow, tunes. Wow, thank you. Your eyes are red from it. Yeah. yeah been, Lots of work, burning daylight. Yeah, I've been burning a candle at all three ends, you know. Oh, thank you. You both have hearts that are really big, and you seem to be helpful to those struggling musicians that are out there just trying to figure out what to do. It doesn't matter if they're Christian, non-Christian. What advice would you give them, Troy, if they're new musicians just getting started that are struggling? Listen to those who have been there. Learn from those who have failed and succeeded. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I've done. I've learned from a, a lot of others who who are very successful. And I've learned from some who don't even play anymore. Uh -huh. And and that's my biggest advice is to listen to somebody who's been there and take their advice and, and apply it. Very good answer. How about you, Bill? Well, I disagree. I don't think you should listen to anybody. No, I'm kidding. Uh, kind of, I'm kind of kidding. You, you really need to find your own style. Uh -huh. um, you know, I just, music, uh, I, you know, I've been playing rock music for 35 years, and I, I've done a certain amount of chasing the trends myself and doing this, that, and the other thing because so-and-so does, or I read it in this magazine or that magazine, and really, at the end of the day, you need your own style, and, and and the formulas that work, maybe even for some of the biggest artists in the industry, may not work for you. You know, right. and, and, and rock history, in particular, is full of bands that critics hated. Let me let me state it this way: certainly ignore the critics. Absolutely. You, you, you have to be happy with what you're doing, whether it's in style or not, and find a, a kind of music that you like to play, and just keep playing it forever. If it's not popular now, it will be. And if you're hooked into whatever the latest style is. Don't get too crazy about it because in 10 years you're going to be completely unpopular. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. Because the trends change so rapidly. Yeah, they, they do. So not, never never let the critics break you down. Right. The good because thing they're always going to have a different opinion than you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. And anybody can be a critic. You know, your family can be well, critical. Absolutely. Your friends can be critical. You can be your worst own critic. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know one thing I find curious about both of you guys is that you both participated in state band competitions when you were teenagers. Hmm. You did as an individual and you did with a band. So tell us about that. Well, well, actually I was in the high school jazz band uh -huh. and we went to the state competition for high school jazz band and on the way up our conductor was like, Troy, you're going to take the solo on Chikria Spain. <laughs> I've never played a solo before. Oh. Never played a solo before. And so the bass player sat down two two hours on the bus going up to Phoenix from Tucson and he taught me this scale. Let's go up and down, just go up and down, just go up and down, just play that scale. 
And that's what I did. Uh -huh. And so I went up on stage, stood up, sweating, I was nervous, I was scared, and just went up and down on this scale. And just, you know, kind of... And then before you know it, at the end of the competition, I was awarded Outstanding Guitar Soloist at State for Jazz Band. <laughs> Had no clue what I did. <laughs> cool. Now, how about you, Bill? Well, I was in a high school band, and, it, and actually, even though it was mostly a group thing, and our, our school had a pretty big band, and it was pretty powerful, but I also excelled individually. I, I, was, uh, I was in a uh, San Bernardino County Honor Band, and I also made a California State Honor Band one year, so I had individual achievements, but then, of course, our band was, was really good, and, and we, were, uh, we won a major tournament but in my senior year, so that was a really cool uh, group experience. It sounds like both of you guys at a young age were really honored, you know, in where you were at and what you were doing at that time, even though neither one of you uh, were, were recording or, or um, playing professionally at that time. You were just doing your own thing in high school, but you were both excelling, so that's great. You know, one of the problems, though, with that is in one sense, I mean, this sounds funny, but in one sense, from that point on, it's all been downhill because, you know, I was at the highest level individually and as a group that you could uh -huh. be in high school. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, you know, the day that I graduated, then I picked up the guitar permanently and I stunk for uh -huh. years. Uh -huh. So it was this huge drop off and it was so frustrating. You know, I was, you know, I was used to being just like a samurai warrior with my instrument and then I went down to just being feeble and barely being able to play. It was, you, you, basically you started all over. You started all over from scratch, you know, and it just, there was a big drop off. It took me a long time. And you time did the same thing when you just, switched genres and you went from metal to uh, Nouveau Flamenco. And, and actually, like, well, like Bill said, after high school, you don't have that support system of a group of, of a, you know, of, of the band right. backing you up, of a conductor there to lead you. Right, you're on you your own. You go out, you're on your own. And now it's like, okay, uh, what do I do now? Let me just uh -huh. jam with my friends and play those three note chords again and, and try to be, you know, cool heavy metal band and stuff and play these backyard parties all the time but never getting anywhere. Yeah. I didn't want that. Right. I saw this big picture that I wanted, you know, I wanted to achieve these big dreams, but I just didn't have the tools to do so, yeah. hanging out with these guys. Yeah. And so that's where the journey began. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. And it was tough. It was tough. Okay. Um, what was your first guitar, Troy? 1979, Mom and Dad got me this little half-size Hondo 2 acoustic guitar. And I think I played it two times. Wow. And what was your first one, Bill? A uh, four-string bass guitar. It was a uh, Gibson SG knockoff-looking bass guitar. Uh-huh. And it only had one string on it, and I bought it, bought the instrument for five bucks. For oh, the nice. <laughs> and... Then my mom flipped out when she went down to buy some strings for her because the strings were 20 bucks. So we $20 had, <laughs> strings for a $5 for a $5 instrument. guitar. I remember the first day or so I was waiting for it. I was just playing the one string, you know, and I was trying to play along with Kiss records. And you need at least two strings to be able to really play a yep. song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get a whole, to get an octave, you know, you need at least a couple of strings on bass guitar. But I didn't even know how to tune the thing. And uh, it was... Uh, you know, it was a starting point. It was a bad starting point, but I had a couple of other. As soon as I went, by the time I started to, uh, I had to switch to guitar because what can you do when you're by yourself with a bass guitar? You know, not much. Right, you can't do anything. So, because I thought, well, this is a good fun way to get in a rock band. Anybody can go do 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 like that, but there was nobody else to do it with. And I thought, well, I'm gonna have to switch. This is gonna be hard. Yeah. You know, and I was looking at at all of the icons and heroes of the day of the 70s, you know, from Jimmy Page to all those great players, Shanker, Montrose, and, and Van Halen had just come out, and he was absolutely outrageous for that time. Wow. And, and and that's one reason I kind of didn't want to play it, because I just thought, man, this is a huge mountain to climb. It's going to take forever. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was right. It has taken forever. Yeah. And I, you know, really took 30 years to really develop good vibrato and bending and other things like that. Did you ever take any lessons? 
Uh, no, I wanted to, but I've always had the buffet approach with everything. I, I don't want to sit there and take lessons for five years and learn how to play all these chords that, are, that don't interest, interest me and, and all this other stuff. I just wanted somebody to show me the cool le Zeppelin licks. I yeah. want to know what Eddie Van Halen's doing. And the guy says, well, you know, what you really should do is that's not the way to learn how to play guitar and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I could see what he wanted to do is empty my bank account for five yeah. years. And I didn't yeah. have a lot of money. And I was like, well, a lot of the other stuff I'm not interested in. And he anyways. would have taken you at, at his own pace, too. Yeah. And now, in his defense, he was right. Yeah. But for, but for where I was coming from, I already knew what I wanted to do. And I knew that most of that stuff wasn't going to help me. There, there might have been some times where I was playing covers. And I never played covers very much because... Even if I knew the parts, my fingers just didn't move like everybody else's. And that's the part I was talking about, um, getting your own style. You know, no matter how bad you want to play like your favorite guitar player or drummer or anything, you know, we've all got our own tendencies and our own rhythm style and everything. And just because you want to play like so-and-so doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it. Right. And, and you still, that's the frustrating part. You want to play just like so-and-so. Yeah. And I remember I wanted to play like Schenker. I thought he was the baddest and the coolest. And by the time I finally got a hold of some tablature in the early 80s, uh, that's the other thing. You couldn't just run down to Guitar Center like you can now. And there's, there's a huge library, 20-foot right. rack full of all of the music, no matter what your favorite music is right, right now. Yeah. Back then, it was like some secret religion handshake right. thing. Nobody knew what the licks were. I just wanted somebody to show me what they were. And when yeah. I finally got a hold of some Shanker tab, I was trying to play it. It was so hard. And, you know, I could play about half of it. And, I, and, and But I didn't want to just hit the notes. I wanted to really play it and make it sound the way that he did. And right there, I went, you know what? i got to build my own style. This isn't going to work. Yeah. I cannot play these other people's music. They're, they're really good. Yep. And and no matter how hard I practiced their parts, I couldn't do them. You had to do your own thing. And, and so it took me a long time to really develop my own kind of weird style of playing. And now other people can't play my music, and so that's good. Yeah. Yep. I, I turn the tables. That's you know. a good thing. Absolutely.